Good morning and welcome to Senate Judiciary. We're going to start the day by opening the public hearing on House Bill 151 and call the prime sponsor, Representative Itzy. Good morning, Representative. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. For the record, I'm Representative Dan Itz. I represent Rockham County District 10, the town of Freeman. <coughs> the bill before you is very simple. It takes industrial hemp off of the scheduled drug list. Um, I presume that it's on the scheduled drug list because it's on the federal scheduled drug list. However, it contains, it, it is not itself a drug. Uh, the criteria for some, for cannabis being industrial hemp is that it contains less than 0.3% THC. Uh, for reference, the marijuana that was around when we were kids was 5 to 10 percent THC, and now it's uh, up to about 25 percent THC. So there's no way you're more ever going to get uh, intoxicated smoking industrial hemp. I mean, in our day, you would have had to smoke probably at least 20 joints to get the same you would have, uh, high you would have out of one actual marijuana joint. Now it would be 100. So by the time you got to that 100th uh, joint, you probably wouldn't be feeling the effects of the first one. Um, industrial hemp is, when I, when I ask you to think of industrial hemp, I want you to think F, F, F. Food, fiber, fuel. It's an, an exceptional plant. The seeds, uh, are a whole food. They are extremely nutritious. You can actually live off them for an extended period of time. Uh, you can express oil from them that has both uh, medicinal qualities, uh, the same qualities you find in uh, marijuana oil, but without the intoxicant. intoxicant. And uh, it's also an excellent lubricant. The uh, the body of the, the, the uh, uh, bark of the plant uh, is an excellent fiber. It's what we used to make rope out of. It also makes very durable cloth products. That's what canvas was originally, uh, what they made sails out of. It's what jean, uh, dungarees, jeans were made out of originally. Uh, it's an excellent fiber for making products such as paper. Uh, it's been alleged that's one of the reasons that it's actually uh, been prohibited is that it was uh, uh, Randolph Hearst owned newspapers <coughs> and forests and he didn't want the competition from cannabis, from hemp. Uh, food, fiber, fuel. It's an excellent fuel. It can be made into pellets. It can be burned directly. It can also be used for animal bedding and fodder. And the leaves actually make an excellent salad. Um, I, I saw I'm told I'm not actually had the leaves. Um, the, and if you think of it in terms of animal bedding and fodder, uh, where hay will grow yay tall in the same period of time, uh, hemp will grow to about six or more feet. So just what you can produce in terms of animal fodder uh, on a given acre of land is going to be much, much greater. Uh, it's a crop ideally suited to New Hampshire, unlike most plants that likes our soil. On a south-facing slope, you can get two crops per year. Um, I wish that uh, uh, former Speaker of the House, George Rob, Rob thank you. Uh, we're here because he's a strong advocate of industrial hemp. Uh, if he were here, unless he just came in behind me, I did alert him, um, he would tell you that it would be an excellent way to reclaim some of those fields. When he, when he was at the, um, the public hearing in the house, he described that the fields you go by, the, the stands of trees are all four to six inches in diameter. That's as he referred to it, lost land. That could again become farmland by planting it with hemp, making it productive. It's really something that if you get over this hump, um, it would be 
really beneficial to the state of New Hampshire. Right now, hemp products are used in the United States. We just have to bring it in from other places. We have to import it. When we could produce all we wanted, there were times in our history during the colonial period where you were required to plant hemp because of its uses for ropes and sails. It experienced a resurgence during World War II for rope production for uh, naval vessels. It's an incredibly useful plant. And I hope that you will see to take it off of our drug list. It doesn't take it off the federal drug list, but one threshold at a time. Um, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your testimony this morning. Are there any questions? Senator Cannon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a uh, quick decision. Has any other state, has anyone else done this? It's lasted a while. I remember reading, yes, it has been taken off the scheduled drug list in some states. I want you to think about the fact that there are a number of states that have already taken cannabis off the you know, marijuana off the scheduled drug list. Uh, we are considering it. Why is something that is not a, a drug on the scheduled drug list? No questions. Thanks. Are there, are there any further questions? Senator French. If we, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. If we took this off and allowed it to be commercially grown here, would this be uh, saleable interstate? or would it just be used here in New Hampshire? Good question, I can't answer that. Um, and not, off the, not with any definitive answer. Certainly we could use, well, I think it is something that's a first step. I was, I was doing some reading a couple weeks ago, and I think that if you had somebody who was producing acres and acres of industrial hemp, you might get, inter you would probably get interference from the federal government. I mean, that's just a, a practical reality. Um, the individual who uh, grows a small plot because they want the seeds or they want the animal fodder, um, I doubt you're going to see federal agents swarming over vast areas of New Hampshire trying to find, you know, the six by eight plot of, of industrial hemp that just doesn't make practical sense. Um, it's something I would love to be able to do. I probably wouldn't because I'm probably under observation. Um, but in a general sense, I don't think the, the average New Hampshire citizen would be under any great surveillance for growing industrial hemp. Um, but somehow we've got to start sending a a message, just like the states that have have legalized marijuana, that you got to start somewhere. Follow up. Thank you. So, if we pass this and made it lawful in the state, and one of our citizens grew five acres of it, what would the federal implications be? What would they face federally? as a crime and would we be putting our citizens in jeopardy of federal offenses by doing this? Well, first answer is I don't know particularly what the federal offense is. <coughs> Second is that we are not putting them in, in federal jeopardy, okay? We aren't forcing anybody to grow anything. If somebody grows something, that's their choice. The only thing we're doing is we're saying, we're not going to come down on you for growing industrial hemp. We don't, in that sense, control the federal government. Can we send a message to the federal government? Uh, the federal government is not, as far as I know, coming down in a lot of places on people who, who are now allowed to grow marijuana, two or three plants. So, would I believe that they are going to come down on people for growing a small plot of industrial hemp? I, I seriously doubt it. It's just not it's an effective use of resources. When resources are already very scarce, as we all know. Thank you. Okay, um, I, oh, Senator Cannon. Real quick question. So is it under the list like fathers, marijuana, a class one substance? I, I believe so, yeah. Okay, that was, thank you. 
Representative Bitsy, um, are, do you, are you aware of a UNH report um, that has come out about the use of industrial hemp? Do you know if there's one available? I believe that no report. I, I have not been aware of one having come out. I know that last term we did authorize research. However, there's already abundant research. There's already uh, other countries. Canada grows hemp. Canada federally allows the uh, growing of hemp under license. I feel like I see hemp <clears throat> in all sorts of things. You can buy hemp clothing, you can buy, I have in my house hemp seeds that I put in my cereal. I mean, what, why, how does that happen? <clears throat> if, it's a, if it's not. You can't grow it. We oh, you have can't to, grow it. You can't but grow you can it. Buy you have to, but you can buy it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have hemp seeds at home. You, you buy them over the internet. <coughs> you, the, the, there's no crime to import hemp products. It's only a crime to create them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no, sorry. Well, to create that, to, to grow the hemp to create them. You, you can buy, uh, you can buy hemp fiber and bring it in the United States and, and make something with oh, it. Oh, you can. But you just can't grow the fibers yourself. Thank you. Okay, no problem. No. Okay. Are there any further questions? questions? Seeing none, thank you very much, Representative. Thank you. Chair, Republic, Representative O'Connor. Good morning, Madam Chair. Members of the Senate. I'm Representative John Key O'Connor and representing Rockingham 6, Terry. And I'm also the Chairman of the Environment and Agricultural Committee. And this came out of our committee, 18-0, on the Sun calendar, passed the House, and now it's over here to you. Uh, HB 151, obviously we support it. Uh, we've been studying it for the last four sessions that I've been involved with. Uh, Industrial hemp is a remarkable plant that contains no psychoactive uh, products and uh, properties. It has been around for 10,000 years. And last year we did pass regulations allowing the research at the University of New Hampshire. And know at this time I've not seen any report come from them when I last talked with the other tech people. But recently, to answer uh, Senator French's question, there are 30 other states that have enacted legislation to include both Vermont and Maine, 2016, that are now allowing for commercial growth. <laughs> now we know that hemp grows extremely well, and in New Hampshire's rocky soil, it will withstand drought conditions, even though with the rain we're having right now, we have gone from extreme, but we're still under a moderate drought condition, and hopefully that will be alleviated. I'm also a member of the National Agricultural Task Force, which I do meet with uh, both the uh, representatives of Connecticut and Massachusetts, uh, with the National Conference of State Legislators, and we have been recently down at the University of North Carolina, who is uh, doing all the research to expedite the growth of the um, hemp plant. Uh, so they have research going on. Uh, we've not been to Purdue yet, and uh, Indiana, um, the University of Michigan, Purdue uh, has been experimenting with it also. Now, pun intended, it grows like a weed. There is no need for herbicides, which makes it environmentally friendly. Hemp is also an excellent biodiesel qualities amongst being an ecologically friendly crop, except for marijuana. If you grow hemp next to marijuana, it sterilizes the marijuana plant. So our farmers in New Hampshire can use another crop that is sustainable and profitable. Finally, Senator French, the Federal Farm Act of 2015 allows the growth of industrial hemp if certified and registered by the state. HB 421 that we passed last year allows our Department of Agriculture to certify and register. The only thing they have to do is a special form from DEA that typically all the seeds are purchased from uh, Canada and they go through that process there. Uh, that concludes my uh, testimony, and uh, I thank you. I'll take any questions that anybody may have. Thank you very much for okay, your testimony. You. Oh, we're not done. Okay. Um, are there any questions? No, we're done. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, the chair will call Daryl Perry. <coughs> thank you. For the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC, and as 
the last speaker was mentioning the National Conference of State Legislators. I just happened to have been on their website and pulled up the list of states that allow industrial hemp research or cultivation. Uh, Alabama, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire has that uh, research program that was mentioned, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, and West Virginia. Uh, there was testimony earlier by, I believe it was Representative Itzy, saying that industrial hemp has you know, a very, 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 very tiny amount of THC and it would take a lot to wind up getting high. That's why the feds decided to basically lump it in with cannabis as a controlled substance. Well, let me give you an example. Uh, the same ingredients that are used to make beer are basically the ingredients used to make bread. So if you eat enough bread, you'll get a little bit of a buzz, but I don't think anybody has ever thought to try regulating bread as an alcoholic thing. Even though, again, there's about 0.5% of a loaf of bread is going to be alcohol content. So this is one of the easiest to understand bills that I think any legislative committee is going to hear this year where it just says industrial hemp shall not be designated a controlled substance. It should not be because, again, you can't get high off of it. But even if you could, I don't think that should sway the decision of this committee to say we are not going to, at the state level, prosecute people for growing a substance that has no adverse effects. And that is my testimony. I will answer any questions. Thank you very much for your testimony. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. The chair called Ian Freeman. I was actually hoping to be able to uh, respond to some of the other uh, people who were going to testify against this, but uh, regardless, um, I think it's a great bill. It seems pretty straightforward. In fact, I think it doesn't go far enough. Uh, I think what we need to see is an end to prohibition across the board when it comes to the cannabis plant uh, entirely. And uh, otherwise, please pass this thing. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for your testimony. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Um, the chair called Bill McGonagall. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I have very brief written testimony. Um, one of my businesses is Sunny Woodlands Farm in Plainfield, New Hampshire, and it's a small farm. I'd like to expand it. Uh, the uh, current way I expand the farm is through digging and look, getting in loads of manure, mixing it all in. It's very expensive. I've got plenty of land. You know, <laughs> imagine if there were this machine that could just go and take, a, take acres of, of uh, I think Dan called it uh, lost land. And, improve the soil, add nutrients to the soil, and to improve the structure of the soil. Well, that is the hemp plant. That's how it's been used through most of history. Um, I primarily like to use hemp on the farm for improving the soil, for um, expanding the land that's in use, and then um, as, as time goes on for a cash crop. So for small farms, hemp is particularly useful for improving the soil and helping sort of bootstrap small farms. Large farms could use it as just a straight cash crop. Um, to address, I think it was your question about um, the products and there was some, there was a question about the interstate sales and that sort of thing. Uh, the Federal Farm Act, I, I think it was of 2014, did partially legalize uh, industrial hemp. I think it was section 7606, but don't quote me on that. Um, what it prohibits is the interstate sale of seeds, and that's not actually a problem. Um, the two brief points I wanted to make are, um, well, so seed availability is, is listed as the number two hurdle to commercialization of hemp. So the first thing I wanted to mention about this bill is that as written, it takes effect 
60 days after signing. And if that would be signed this year, 60 days would be too late for New Hampshire farmers to do anything. Um, to produce seeds, hemp requires at the earliest 110 days. And on my testimony here, I have some data from UNH Cooperative Extension looking at Concord as just an average location in New Hampshire. We have about 124 days. Um, 110 days before the last average hard frost would be June 3rd. So I would suggest that the, uh, the committee offer an amendment to to change the bill to going into effect upon signing rather than waiting 60 days. All 60 days will do is hurt New Hampshire farmers by making them wait another year. Um, one is the loss of potential revenue. One problem is the loss of potential revenue. Another is that there's a competitive environment. Vermont already has a program for industrial hemp. Maine already has a program for industrial hemp. So does Massachusetts. And New Hampshire, you know, when you get into these new emerging markets, the sooner you do it, the better your first member position is. New Hampshire farmers will be at a somewhat competitive disadvantage if they have to wait yet another year to um, plant some, some hemp. So the, the main effect of this bill will be whether the state of New Hampshire prosecutes or goes after farmers for planting industrial hemp. That's, you can't do anything about the federal. Um, there's a lot of industrial hemp being grown in the U.S. Kentucky is huge. Colorado's coming up. Um, the federal government is not prosecuting anywhere there. I don't think it will be coming into New Hampshire. The second uh, thing I wanted to point out was, and I'm not sure, but perhaps it's housekeeping. In the Controlled Drug Act, which is RSA 318, there is a definition of a cannabis type drug that, as written, would currently include industrial hemp. So the second part of my written testimony is just copy and paste out of the federal definition for industrial hemp, that section could be amended to exclude industrial hemp from the Controlled Drug Act. So I encourage the members of the committee to recommend that this bill pass, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for your testimony this morning. Are there any questions? Senator Gannon, then Senator Lasky. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just two simple questions. Sir. When the plants are fully grown, yes. does hemp look just like a pot plant? It does not. It's about 10 feet tall and okay. it has a, a very large different structure. Some people are worried that a juvenile hemp plant would look like a marijuana plant, but um, anyone trained in the basic botany can tell the difference and because at different stages of the maturation the two plants look different, so you can tell solely by the height and the structure of the plant whether it's a industrial hemp or a marijuana plant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Oh, this is a good word if you had to be in a, one of those spelling bees. Yeah. The tetrocannabinola? Uh, tetrahydrocannabinola. Yeah. I can't pronounce S -T it. That's THC, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That part I can understand more. Would, with the concentration of 0.3% in an oil, would it be something that they could get to a higher concentration? So, the, it, something to the oil? Um, so it's not actually in the oil. I looked yeah. into that. Um, also, for um, there are certain um, strands, certain strains of hemp that are grown for CBD, which is um, has a lot of medical benefit. It helps kids with epilepsy, especially. Um, those are not in the seeds, so um, that's where the oil comes from. So, in order to grow those specific strains or to get THC, you actually have to get that out of the uh, rough fiber, which is quite a process. It's, it's much, you know, it's much more complicated even than. Um, Harvesting corn with the combine. Thank you, especially. Well, uh, Senator Lasky. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Is Canada the only place to buy the seeds? It's um, Canada is the best source of seeds. There are there are so there are domestic programs and there's some federal registration about how you can get seeds across state lines and the DEA is involved with that. So for New Hampshire farmers to get seeds, getting them from Canada might be the easiest way. Um, the very best thing, though, that we can do is to not worry about the interstate or uh, international transport of seeds, but to get these things going as soon as possible so that New Hampshire farmers can be producing seeds for other New Hampshire farmers. And that way we don't have to worry about the federal or the international aspect of it. Um, but 
with uh, staying in New Hampshire, with the, especially with the varieties that would grow best in New Hampshire. If we get seeds from Kentucky, for instance, they're going to be selecting for different varieties that have longer growing conditions, which would be less useful to New Hampshire farmers. So the best thing we can do is to have a New Hampshire program with New Hampshire farmers growing seeds for other New Hampshire farmers and not worry about the federal. And, just oh, to follow up. and that was still doing that, whether you had to get it from Canada or whether you were able to self-produce. Yes. Uh, would the passage um, you still give you enough time for the crop to uh, grow this year? Yeah, I don't know the actual time to get it imported from Canada, mm -hmm. um, but Certainly, if we wait 60 days to enact this, it would completely rule it out. Um, and if we're able to do a transfer from Maine, for instance, that would be, you know, I'm assuming that would be easier than, than doing paperwork from Canada, just setting up a, you know, someone going over to Maine getting seeds. I'm sorry, just one last question. And that's, uh, that's okay with the uh, farm act. That, in other words, to purchase the farm act provides for that mechanism, okay. yes. Yes, Thank and um, just to add to that, the I'm pretty sure that uh, Senator Rand Paul has introduced legislation for this year's Farm Act to completely legalize uh, the use of industrial hemp. And based on all the pilot programs that are going on, it seems likely that that's going to pass. So these issues may, um, by time the next, by time this year's Farm Act passes, those issues might have gone away already. So New Hampshire should you know, get out of the way. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. The chair will call George Deere. Oh, no, George Carpenter. I'm sorry. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. I'm before you um, wearing a couple of hats. At one point in time, I worked with law enforcement. And I can tell you the reason that the uh, hemp plant is viewed as cannabis, um, it is to the neophyte an identical product. However, the controlled substance is actually the tetrahydrocannabinol, not the actual plant. That did not prevent a classmate of mine from arresting a 73-year-old Italian-American and confiscating 20 plants from his backyard, which the uh, County lab then discovered were San Marzano tomatoes. <coughs> so one can't use just the presence of the plant to presume that it's got an illegal substance to it. As a farmer, I actually have seen a way of regulating this that may be of interest to the committee, which is to follow the National Organic Program. The NOP allows you to market under the USDA organic label if you meet certain standards. You have to buy certified seeds, you have to grow it under certified conditions, it has to be harvested under certified conditions, and then it can be marketed carrying the organic program label. That does not mean that one cannot actually take cuttings from a plant, and what no one's addressed at this point is the idea that you can hydroponically grow um, industrial hemp as well. That's usually done by the propagation of cuttings. Cuttings under the NLP are allowed, but it has to be documented. There has to be a paper trail so that I know that my organic seed became an organic plant that I took cuttings of. And now that I'm not buying a seed, how do I have this product? Well, I have this product by the propagation of cuttings. I have to document it. There's a random inspection. There's an annual scheduled inspection. And there's a means for the program to verify that product being generated is the product you claim. I believe the state could do a similar program uh, in the production of industrial hemp and uh, solve a lot of the concerns of people that have um, an abundance of caution. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony this morning. Are there any questions? Senator Hennessy? <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your testimony. <coughs> What's been going through my mind over the last couple of, of uh, people testifying is, is how is industrial hemp like or not like growing poppy plants or using poppy seeds? Well, Daryl Perry and a few others have commented that there is a, there is a um, connection. 
So if I was to grow opium poppies like you'd find in Afghanistan, it's an entirely different plant than the California poppy that you can buy at the Agway store and just sow the seeds on. The same rye grass that you can buy in the Agway is the same rye that we made into rye bread or rye whiskey. Um, part of it is the intent. The uh, sugar enhanced genetically modified SESU, SE2s, those are all sweet eating corns, but they're essentially the seed slip of a, of a grass plant, ZMAs. We've enhanced the content of the sugars, making it more palatable to us, much as the uh, marijuana growers, it's still cannabis, but uh, one vari variation on the cannabis that's been hybridized to have a high THC content. As prior, as prior testimony has said, if you have a field of marijuana and you have a field of industrial hemp, the hemp sterilizes the marijuana. If you've ever grown flint corn for cornmeal and your neighbor has a field full of, of uh, SESU sugary corn that they're hoping to sell at a farm stand, that corn will end up tasting like cardboard because your pollen from the flint corn has gone over and polluted that plant. So essentially, by growing hemp, if we were to do anything, we'd probably ruin a whole bunch of pot crops. Thank you. Are there any further questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. The chair of Paul Heather Mullins. this bill. I think a lot of, um, a friend of mine is actually working in D.C. He's part of the Virginia Industrial Hemp Coalition, and they're working on a bill there that's going to make it so the, uh, increase the regulations federally to 0.6 instead of 0.3 of what the allowable THC could potentially be in the hemp plant. But I think a lot of, um, what he had recommended, I tell you guys today, is if we are going to move forward, that there's ways that you can have the bill um, regarding the regulations that have to match the federal ones, uh, just in terms of like getting banking and insurance and stuff um, to match federal regulations. But there is a bill in Washington right now that's going to be increasing the 0.3% to 0.6, and there's already several states that are growing industrial hemp, so. Um, I pretty much support it and I think that when you look at it from an ethical standpoint it's this bill for us kind of just means like are we going to use law enforcement here to you know arrest people and charge people with a crime for growing a plant that is you know their own choice to do so and as far as you know regulations that's what it comes down to on a state level so yeah, my thoughts on the issue Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Senator Gannon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Why would they be trying to increase the THC level in I no idea Just to get five. more room for growers to grow. I mean, it really, like, I agree with what Ian said in terms of, I think, controlling what anybody grows is just, like, it makes no sense to me. It's a very, like, authoritarian approach to things, but. So my question is, why would you be increasing it? It's not the substance that's used. You're going to smoke bike, you're not going to smoke industrial hemp. Why would they want a higher THC level in the hemp? I mean, it's okay. just, it's kind of like, you know, just room to play around with, I guess. I don't know what his initiative was okay. in terms of, like, filing the new bill to expand that, but, I mean. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? Seeing no, thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak to Council 151? Seeing none, we'll close public hearings.